our movie reveals the story of two women's romantic relationship, which will be frowned upon by the people around them. This will lead them to take a risky action, but it will complicate their situation, forcing them to make a decision for both of them. Therefore, let's dive into this movie's turbulent events, discovering how far love can go. The movie begins with a black and white vintage scene, where a young woman named Anna stands as a lifeless body, lost in her own thoughts, with the wind going through her hair in a moment of contemplation. With a heavy heart, she wonders about her painful story and her unknown origins, while curiously seeking to know about the two women she always heard people talk about in whispers. There, at the crossroads of her life, begins our tale, as thick as thieves with secrets untold. So bring your freshly popped popcorn, along with the bittersweet tears shed for Alyssa and Marcella's journey, where every cloud has a silver lining. In a flashback of the year 1923, we are transported to the province of Chuba, in Argentina, where we catch sight of a young woman in the wagons of the train, with a beautiful and reassuring smile, heading to an unknown destination. Soon the train halts, and we depict her on the carriage, making her final move towards a quaint house in the middle of nowhere. All of a sudden a woman opens the door and walks out to check on the visitor. After observing the young woman from afar, we witness surprise etched on her face, not expecting her presence, prompting the bottle to slip from her hands. With steady steps, she approaches her, and with eyes full of tears, she wonders whether she can touch her face whether this is reality or mere fantasy. It is indeed a long-awaited reunion. Soon, she kindly extends an invitation to her house, where she offers her delicious food. The young woman starts eating hungrily, as if she hasn't had a bite to eat in years. Later on, when nestled in the open expanse by the tranquil lake, immersed in nature's beauty, the young woman breaks the silence, admitting that she wants to know everything about the whole story. Her curiosity is piqued as ever. The woman, on the other hand, confesses that knowing everything is quite impossible. However, she will put her best foot forward to recall and recount every detail, announcing the beginning of the tale. A couple of decades earlier, in 1898, in Coruña, on a day where rain pours heavily, a young woman named Marcella rushes for her first class at a convent school. She is completely wet from head to toe, and while she is heading to the class, she encounters another student named Alyssa. Upon seeing her inappropriate, yet drenched clothes, Alyssa accompanies Marcella to her room to help her dry off. It seems they've started off on the right foot. In the ensuing scene, we find Marcella wiping her hair dry, with Alyssa by her side, helping her playfully, eliciting a chuckle from both of them. We sense a new friendship brewing. Out of worry, Marcella questions Alyssa whether they will count against her the day she is missed. Much to her dismay, Alyssa nods in confirmation, but she brushes off any concerns, since her aunt is the principal and will definitely take into consideration that sickness prevented her from joining. However, Alyssa can't stop herself from making a weird declaration, liking the mole on Marcella's neck, much to the latter's surprise. Soon they both walk into the classroom, where we depict Alyssa addressing the teacher regarding Marcella's situation, so she can let her in. She praises her intellectual skills, assuring that she will catch up with the lessons hastily. The teacher greets Marcella warmly and invites her to take a seat. Later, following the class's conclusion, we discover Alyssa observing Marcella with a weird, admirable gaze, before joining her. Marcella expresses her appreciation for Alyssa, thanking her for her kindness. Upon learning that Alyssa stays with the nuns, Marcella wonders about what it's like to reside with them in the same unit. Alyssa, bothered, admits that it feels like a nightmare. She reveals that they are always fighting as they vie to become the Sultan's favorite, adding that she trusts no one but what she sees around her a revelation that catches Marcella off guard, urging her to question whether Alyssa believes in God or not. Alyssa, on the other hand, after retreating to a safe place afar from people's ears, confesses that she doesn't believe in nuns or the Holy Spirit. In response, Marcella is unsure whether she believes in the existence of God or not. She is still lost. It's a tough nut to crack for Marcella to figure out her beliefs. Moments later, they arrive at Marcella's house. Before departing, they bid each other farewell, with Alyssa, ever considerate, reminding Marcella not to forget her umbrella the following day. It's raining cats and dogs, after all. Later, while Marcella is having dinner with her family, her father inquisitively questions her about the young lady who accompanied her home earlier. Marcella reveals that she is just a new friend whom she met at school. Her father, in return, advises her to focus solely on her studies. 
whereas her mother wears a worried expression on her countenance. We find ourselves questioning the strong connection between Alyssa and Marcella when we find the latter repeating Alyssa's name several times, imagining how she will address her when she sees her at school with a wide smile on her face. It's like she's over the moon thinking about her new friend. In the following scene, she takes her umbrella as she departs for school. However, at the door, after a second thought, she changes her mind and leaves it. When she arrives at school, Alyssa finds her completely soaked once again. Therefore, Alyssa takes her back to the room and starts drying her off with her delicate hands, much to Marcella's delight as we capture them looking at each other. After the class, while they gather again in the garden, while their classmates sing in harmony, Alyssa takes advantage of the moment to take Marcella to her room, her sanctuary from her aunt and the nuns. Once in, Marcella expresses her amazement with her lovely chamber. Alyssa reveals that everyone wants her to find a suitable man and get married immediately, but she sees it as a last resort. It seems like Alyssa wants to keep her options open. Marcella, on the other hand, discloses that her father believes that school is a waste of time and teachers aren't respectable, and instead she should marry before someone gets her pregnant. However, she expresses her uncertainty about whether she intends to get married or not, prompting a mockery from Alyssa, questioning whether she has anything she is sure about in her life. With a heavy sigh and after a few moments of silence, Marcella confesses that she spent her childhood in an orphanage in the worst conditions, poor quality food, a low-grade dorm, and unfair treatment. Until suddenly, when she turned 10 years old, a woman appeared out of the blue who claimed to be her real mother and took her to her house, where she found a man acting like her real father. But, much to her grief, neither of them gave her love and affection, and they never had the courage to come clean about why they left her in that place for several years, a revelation that saddened Alyssa's heart. Marcella questions Alyssa, saying that since she is unsure whether her parents are indeed her biological parents or not, how does she expect her to believe in God, marriage, or anything else in life? Alyssa extends her apologies and approaches Marcella for a consoling hug, but Marcella leaves the room in a huff. Night falls, and while gathering with her parents around the table, Alyssa appears at Marcella's house, bringing her a book she forgot at school earlier. Her father welcomes her and retrieves the book. Upon handing it over to Marcella, he informs her that some books bring no good a statement that makes Marcella annoyed. While her mother keeps playing her cards close to her chest, contemplating the events unfolding in front of her eyes with no words, Marcella goes hastily to her room, takes a seat, and is eager to start reading the book. As she browses through the pages, her eyes fall on a note written by Alyssa, where she mentions that she would never harm her intentionally, demanding pardon. Delighted, Marcella embraces the book. Moments later, her mother joins in, advising her daughter to ignore her father's harsh words and urge her to continue reading, revealing that she, herself, always reads in secret, with a strong belief that books are an outstanding source for expanding one's knowledge and opening one's eyes to the world. She unveils a hidden book from under her skirt and hands it to her before departing. The next day, as they take a leisurely walk along the beach, Alyssa confesses that she dreamed of Marcella the previous night. Surprisingly, Marcella herself admits that she has also had visions of her, eliciting a delightful laugh from both. However, their dreams remain a closed book. They take a seat on the shore, enjoying the feast for the eyes. Alyssa recounts to Marcella that she always dreams of riding high on a horse and galloping all the way to Argentina, even though she has never been in the saddle. Marcella, soon drawn like a moth to a flame by the call of the sea, takes off her clothes and dives into the briny deep. Before long, Alyssa follows suit, making a splash with the water, with their giggles music to the ears. In each other's company, they revel in moments of pure bliss. Following their halcyon days, Alyssa accompanies Marcella to her house. Before saying goodbye, Alyssa confesses to Marcella that if she were to kick the bucket, she would want it to be by her side. She admits that she spent the time of her life today. Marcella remains silent and simply plants a kiss on her cheek. Once she enters her house, an unpleasant scene unfolds. Marcella is greeted with a slap on the wrist by her father, while her mother watches silently. Marcella, caught by surprise, unable to fathom her father's act, retreats to her room immediately. The next day, we find Marcella burning the midnight oil with her lessons while her father walks in, laying down the law forbidding her from going to school to take care of her ailing mother, even though the latter assures her that she is in fine fettle. Obliged, Marcella remains at home, 
while her soul yearns for the ivy-covered halls of school, and for Alyssa specifically. On the other hand, Alyssa roams through the classes, casting about for her friend, but she is nowhere to be seen. In the afternoon, Alyssa pays Marcella an unexpected visit, much to her delight. Marcella quickly ushers her into her room before anyone catches wind of her presence. There, we can feel their passion thick in the air. In a moment of affection, they approach each other on the brink of a kiss when they suddenly hear the door open, making them both anxious. Moments later, Marcella's father storms in and finds Alyssa hitting the books with the lessons that Marcella has missed throughout the day. However, he ends up showing her the door. The following day, when Marcella is about to take her leave for her classes, her father puts his foot down, mentioning that she will no longer go to that school, but to a boarding school in Madrid, much to her astonishment. However, she turns a deaf ear to his words and tries to make a break for it. Yet her father manages to stop her in her tracks by throwing her to the ground and holding her, while her mother witnesses the scene, sobbing uncontrollably. More than four weeks have passed, and both girls write letters to each other consistently. Alyssa confesses that everything around her reminds her of Marcella. She expresses her profound sense of miss for her smell, her face, and her presence. She reminisces about their enjoyable times together and their shared laughs, wishing to be by her side and feeling like a fish out of water without her. On the other hand, Marcella herself admits that Alyssa has cast a spell on her soul and body, and she keeps imagining them both laying with love-written letters. She confesses that she always embraces the letter before opening it, a longing spirit. However, her words soothe her pain, like a bomb to her soul. However, she fears that one day she will receive the short end of the stick and stop getting letters from her. Three years later, Alyssa succeeds in accomplishing her dream to become a teacher, working in a Spanish village. One afternoon, while we depict her teaching children, she receives an unforeseen visit from Marcella, which fills her with immense joy, like a kid in a candy store. They greet each other with a tight and passionate embrace. Later on, Alyssa invites Marcella to her home, unaware that the walls have ears, as an elderly woman from the village watches them. Marcella settles in, learning that Alyssa has been making several drawings of her. We can sense their desire as they approach each other, sharing a long-awaited kiss. With delicate touches and smooth caresses, their breaths intensify, they lay on the bed with their bodies intertwined, sharing their first intimate moments on cloud nine. Later on, Elisa, out of longing, urges Marcella to apply to nearby school, seizing the opportunity to meet often. Time passes, and Marcella manages to teach close to her beloved, Elisa. One afternoon, as they make their way home with their laughter echoing through the air, they unexpectedly encounter a peculiar woodsman and his companions, casting them curious and unsettling glances. In the following few sequences, we catch sight of their joyful moments, sharing love and devotion. Days go by with their bond getting stronger. One night, they both attend the village's party. We witness them enjoying the atmosphere, swaying with the music, and savoring food. All of a sudden, a woodsman approaches them and invites Marcella to dance. Initially Marcella refuses outright, but with his persistence, he eventually coerces her to join him on the dance floor. Later, after leaving the party, Alyssa demands that Marcella blend in with the crowd to avoid any problems. Meanwhile, the woodsman listens in nearby, seeing that afterwards they both start dancing happily, close to each other. The next morning, as the two young ladies head to the river to wash their clothes, they begin to notice that the women of the village are throwing stones at them. In the following scene, we depict the woodsman heading to Alyssa's house, looking for Marcella, determined to invite her for a dance. But Alyssa receives him and informs him that Marcella won't accompany him. Then she shuts the door on him. Out of rage, the man keeps cursing Alyssa, while hitting the door and calling for Marcella. However, he is only met by silence, which prompts him to leave soon, frustrated. In the ensuing scene, once Marcella steps into her classroom, she discovers that most of the children have stopped attending her class, taking into account the women of the village have rejected her, much to her annoyance. Meanwhile, while in the forest gathering firewood, Alyssa gets stoned by several people, caught in the middle. Hours later, Marcella rushes back home in terror and starts treating Alyssa's wounds hastily, tending to her injuries. Days go by, and the two lovers start disguising themselves to avoid any possible harm from people disguised as innocents. Until one night, Alyssa, unable to take it anymore, decides to take action and put an end to their misery. 
She will be heading to Buenos Aires for a while to resolve the situation. Days pass, and the neighbor finds out that Alyssa is missing. One day, when Marcella is depicted gathering her laundry, a woman approaches her, wondering about Alyssa's whereabouts. Marcella reveals that Alyssa went on a trip to visit some relatives in Cuba, eliciting surprise and confusion within the woman and misleading her. In the following scene, Marcella passes by the forest when the woodsman catches her sight and seizes the opportunity to approach her. He wonders whether Alyssa has left for good and whether she is residing alone currently, which Marcella confirms. Marcella informs him that she does not have anyone to help her gather firewood. Therefore, the man, ever gentle, offers to bring her wood later in the night. Night falls, and Marcella stands with a burning candle at her window, waiting for the woodcutter. Moments later he appears, singing delightfully, and enters the house, brightening her world. Weeks later, a man appears unexpectedly at Marcella's house, and upon discovery, it is none other than Alyssa, who now goes by the name of Mario. She cut her hair and came back for Marcella. There was an urgent need to be by her side, and they both share tender kisses, reviving their love. The next day, Alyssa visits the city of Coruña to address the priest, Mario. She confesses that she was born out of wedlock and was never baptized, hence having no official record. She expresses her dream of being baptized in order to marry Marcella. Without hesitation and with a reassuring tone, the priest offers to perform the ceremonies immediately. The next day, following Alyssa's baptism, we bear witness to her marriage with Marcella without any issues, pledging to love and protect each other for a lifetime. Then they take a picture for memory, and the scene is sealed with a warm kiss under the rain, a perfect moment captured. Shortly after, they ride back home in a carriage, accompanied by their neighbor from the village, who keeps looking at them suspiciously. Upon reaching their destination, people across the street stare at them oddly, easily identifying Alyssa in her male attire and standing out. Their neighbor soon informs the local priest about the rumors, and they immediately pay a visit to Lisa's house with a doctor. Upon opening the door and questioning her about her husband, Marcella insists that Alyssa is her husband, and his name is Mario, however, they remain skeptical. Marcella reveals that Mario is Alyssa's cousin, and they look alike, misleading them. Persisting in their attempt to examine her husband physically, Marcella suggests they wait until she gives birth, for she is currently pregnant. Then she closes the door in panic, after succeeding in keeping her composure in front of them. Afterward, Marcella holds Alyssa's hand tightly and expresses her desire to move to Buenos Aires, to avoid further scrutiny and to escape the storm. Soon after, we hear the chaos and the glass smashing. The villagers gather outside their house, shouting, throwing stones, and demanding they come out, baying for blood. Unsure of what to do, they both embrace each other in dread, caught between a rock and a hard place. Days later, the priest calls for Alyssa, confronting her following the villagers' accusations. Alyssa, on the other hand, assures him that the news spreading is none other than slander, a pack of lies. He blames her, calling them liars and condemning them to hell, casting the first stone. In an unexpected twist, the priest calls for the authorities to press Alyssa against the wall, putting her in the hot seat. A doctor soon joins in to confirm Alyssa's gender. Unable to bear the pressure, and with tears streaming down her face. Once they learn that she is a girl, Alyssa reveals that she is intersex. However, enraged, the priest curses them both, adding fuel to the fire. The next day, news spreads of their marriage as the couple flees the village, spreading like fire. We catch sight of Marcella gathering her belongings, ready to depart the village with Alyssa, willing to start anew. Along the way, they are stopped by guards on their path to Porto, However, soon after checking their documents, they are luckily allowed to pass. They finally reach their destination and settle in a room. They treasure being together as we capture them embracing each other. Eventually Alyssa finds work at a sewing company, putting in extra effort to earn money. On the other hand, Marcella is seen struggling with the challenges of her pregnancy. You may be pondering about her pregnancy. Let us then revisit the evening when she welcomed the woodsman into her home. It was on that night that they shared a brief moment, leading to the pregnancy. Weeks later, Marcella and Alyssa calculate their finances, realizing they can only afford one ticket, with the other amount to be obtained in approximately two months, dimming their happiness. One morning, while the two ladies are having their breakfast, some guards knock on the door of the room forcefully. Taken off guard, Alyssa rushes to open the door, 
only to find police officers delivering shocking news. By order of the Portuguese government, both Elisa and Marcela are under arrest. Elisa, in an attempt to protect Marcela, keeps on saying that she didn't do anything, but they ignore her pleas. Soon, Marcela is seen being kept in a cell, whereas Elisa is led to the warden. The man tells her that there is a complaint against her, mentioning that she is instead a woman who falsified her documents to marry another woman and flee Argentina. Alyssa, standing there, confused and worried, initially denies those accusations. But under the warden's persistence, she eventually breaks into tears, asking for forgiveness, revealing her true nature. The warden blames her for hiding the truth, as they were on the brink of taking her to the men's cell, knowing it won't be long before these savages uncover her true identity as a woman. The truth is revealed. Alyssa wonders about the crime they are accused of. The man responds that they are accused of transvestism, blasphemy, and falsification of documents, and that they will only be interrogated there, as it is a Portuguese government, but afterwards they will be transferred to another state in Spain for their trial. The decision is theirs. Alyssa, ever caring and considerate towards her partner, begs him to leave Marcela, because she is not guilty of anything. Besides, she is going to have a baby, playing her trump card. A revelation that makes the warden rethink his decision. Soon, he informs Alyssa that he will escort her to the women's cell with Marcella, so they can be together. Alyssa's countenance shifts from joyful to sad upon learning about the warden's decision. She expresses her appreciation for his thoughtfulness and rushes immediately to get herself a dress. In the meantime, taking into account her pregnancy and miserable condition, the women urge Marcella to rest and offer her food. In the ensuing scene, we find Alyssa and Marcella embracing tightly, vowing to support each other, resolute in their shared pursuit of future dreams. As days pass, Marcella's belly is getting bigger with the growing life within. Their unique and unusual tale increasingly touches the hearts of the ladies surrounding them, who shower Marcella and her unborn child with gifts in acts of kindness. After several weeks, Marcella finally gives birth to a little girl, whom she names Anna, Little does she know that her daughter's arrival will change her life completely. Days go by, and the warden pays a visit to the governor to ask him to act in favor of the two women. Upon realizing that if they leave the state, they could be imprisoned for more than 20 years, the governor reveals that he is indeed under pressure from the Spanish authorities, wanting them to stand trial in Coruña. The warden believes that they are not criminals, they just fell in love with each other. Upon learning that Marcella gave birth to a little girl, much to the governor's surprise, since his wife also feels sympathy for them. He orders the warden to do everything possible to help them, but within the law. On the other hand, in the cell, while Marcella is immersed in motherhood, Alyssa informs her that she has secured enough money for the tickets now. However, Marcella believes that if they leave, they will only be jumping from the frying pan into the fire. All of a sudden, the baby starts crying non-stop, and soon they both realize that there is something wrong with little Anna, they take her hastily to the infirmary, only to find out, much to their dismay, that she has pneumonia. This urges the nurse to take Marcella and her daughter to her house to provide them with better care and help alleviate the baby's fever. A stitch in time saves nine. Days later, the warden informs Alyssa that he can no longer keep them in his house, and also acknowledges that if they leave, they will be deported. However, he has thought that he could help them escape on the boat without their documents being checked giving them a lifeline. While this lifts Alyssa's spirits, the man cautions that it is just a mere guess. The next day, both Alyssa and Marcella start getting ready, but strangely, Marcella is discouraged. After questioning her sudden confusion, Marcella reveals that she does not care if she will be free outside, since wherever they go, people will mock them and curse their relationship. Therefore, she believes that they have no escape, and she cannot let all this happen to her daughter and make her life a living hell. Alyssa grabs her face and assures Marcella that if she wants to stay alone with her daughter, she will understand. However, Marcella gets furious and confesses that she wants to leave her daughter behind for the sake of being with Alyssa, a heartbreaking decision. In the subsequent scene, they head to the warden's house to leave the baby, saying goodbye and expressing gratitude for everything a bitter pill to swallow. The couple pledges to safeguard the little girl and ensure she knows her real mother, leaving no stone unturned. In the carriage, Marcella, hearing her daughter's cries in the background, cannot hold back and starts crying inconsolably, 
prompting Alyssa to take her into her embrace in an attempt to soothe her pain a shoulder to cry on in their moment of sorrow. We circle back to the opening scene of the movie, where we discover that the young woman is none other than Anna, Marcella's daughter, now fully fledged. She enlightens Marcella that her adoptive parents were indeed the wind beneath her wings, yet she ponders if all their sacrifices hit the mark fleeing their homeland, casting her adrift, and leaving her in the lurch. Their heart-to-heart -heart is soon cut short by a woman who gallops in on horseback, it's Alyssa, with her lifelong dream finally in the saddle. Marcella rises from her chair and heads towards her, extending a warm greeting, marking the poignant conclusion of this inspiring tale. We are left with a strong realization that feelings can transcend borders. The love between Alyssa and Marcella overcame all obstacles, making both fulfill their dreams and end up together. Despite discrimination based on their sexuality, which was prohibited in those years, they finally found peace.